In this tutorial, we will use the Azure add-in available in Excel to perform sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis helps us extract subjective information from text. This text could be a tweet from Twitter, a post in Facebook or a blog. These sentiments can be very helpful when brands try to understand the social sentiments with respect to their newly released products on social media or when movie production houses try to understand the sentiments that people have towards the newly released movies. So Excel has a built-in feature that helps us easily obtain these sentiments in a very quick and easy fashion. So let's first have a look at our data set. This is the IMDB movie review data set. So all these are reviews by users who posted their reviews of movies on IMDB and these are the associated labels. So whether the review is positive or negative, these are the actual labels that come with the data set. Let's see how closely the Excel Azure add-in tries to compute sentiments and what labels we get using the Azure add-in. So first we need the Azure add-in for that. So let's download the add-in. If you don't have the add-in, we might have to download it. Let's go to my add-ins and uh, let's go to see all. Then you can go to store. And here let's type Azure machine and this is the add-in that we want Azure machine learning. Let's click add, continue. So this brings up the Azure machine learning add-in that we had. And for our tutorial, we'll be using this text sentiment analysis. Let's click this. And first we need to see what's there in this view schema. It tells us how it takes the inputs and what are the outputs that we get using this sentiment analysis add-in. So one input has to be tweet text. And so this is our input. We need to take care that the letter, the text that we have here in the schema actually matches our header here. So this is the input and you need to have tweet text and we'll get two output sentiment and score. This will automatically get once we run this add in. So next let's see what input, how do we give the inputs? So let's go to input select this and let's make a selection of our input so let's select the first row first column control shift and down arrow it selects all the tweets we see that we have around 1936 tweets sorry 1936 reviews and These could also be tweets, so that doesn't matter. Let's select all the reviews and click OK. And we see that our data has headers, so it's checked, that's good. And then the output, so let's click the output cell, the first cell here in C column first row. Let's now see how do we give the output values here. Select this and we'll start the output from the C column first row. So let's just enter C1 and this also would include the headers. So once you give C1, click enter. This automatically takes the first row in the C column. And now let's go and click predict. It's as simple as this just give the inputs the output and then predict and then let's wait for the add-in to bring out the output so we have our outputs so as we saw earlier in the schema 
sentiment is one output that we get sentiments negative positive these are the sentiments and then the scores associated with these sentiments so these scores can actually be looked at as a percentage let's go to home and convert these to a percentage data type and here you see the percentage so the closer the score is to 100 percentage the more positive the respective tweet is and the closer it is to zero the more negative the tweet is and the closer it is to 50 percentage we can say it is a neutral tweet so these are all really negative zero percent 93 percent positive So these scores are computed by the Azure machine learning add-in. Now that we have our output, the sentiment and score, let's create a simple pivot table to analyze this output. Let's go to insert, select pivot table, select the data range, sentiment and score we need. Or let's just use sentiment. click ok sentiment and let's count how many positive and how many negative values we obtained ok so we had around 1463 negative labels and 473 positive labels so let's see what's the percentage I'm going to divide it by times 100. So this gives you the percentage of negative and positive tweets in this data set. But this uh, doesn't help us a lot. Had all this data been about one particular movie or one particular brand, then this would have made sense that around 75 percentage of the tweets about a particular brand or a particular movie is negative and 24 percentage are positive so that would have made sense but here this is not very helpful so let's create another pivot table this pivot table will actually help us create a confusion matrix so confusion matrix helps us describe the classification performance of a classifier so in this case we'll see how the azure ml add-in classifier has performed so first let's create a pivot table go to insert pivot table and for this we will use our actual labels and the predicted labels click ok and let's put our actual label in the row let's put the sentiment the predicted ones in column and here we can use the actual label as the values part Uh, let's quickly put this table in the form of a confusion matrix but before doing that let's just have a look here so we see that of the 973 tweets that were actually negative our classifier predicted around 880 as negative and 93 as positive but of the 963 tweets that were actually positive 583 were wrongly predicted as negative and only 380 were rightly predicted as positive so we can see that there are some problems here our classifier had some problems in classifying the positive tweets but let's actually use some metrics to see how our classifier really performed so we have metrics such as precision recall and accuracy uh, for that to compute those let's put this table in the form of a confusion matrix first let's rearrange this 
sort this to and let's copy and paste it so these are our actual labels and these are the predicted labels similarly so this one focuses on the positive tweets and if we want to focus on the negative tweets let's can use this we are just rearranging it here we have the negatives so actual labels and this would be the predicted labels so this would be the true positive and rightly the actual label is negative rightly predicted as negative it is true negative and here we have our false negative and our false positive let's copy it and paste it so this is our confusion matrix and now let's compute the matrix precision recall and accuracy for the this is for the positive when we focus on the positive labels and then when we focus on the negative labels so now that we have computed the values for accuracy precision and recall let's see how our add in the ml azure add in is performed in classifying these labels so these are the well known formulae for precision recall and accuracy we've just implemented that formula here using excel uh, functions so in this case the real labels are the actual labels and predicted labels are here the predicted labels so these are the formulae and what we see here is that we have an accuracy of about 65% for both the positive and negative labels this would be the same because accuracy is nothing but sum of the diagonal elements divided by all these elements the true positive false positive false negative and true negative so accuracy would be the same for both these labels and in precision we see that the add in the ml azure has a precision of about 60% and a recall of about 90% so precision tells you nothing but that of all the predicted labels that were uh, negative our ml azure add in predicted 60% of them rightly as negative and recall of all the labels that were actually negative the ml azure add in predicted 95 90% of those labels rightly as negative so this is what precision and recall is and we see this add in has a very good recall about 90% recall and a less amount of precision for negative labels and here this the just the opposite it has about 80% precision better precision compared to recall for the positive labels so let's see how this actually fares with the uh, sentiment analysis that we did using python we also had sentiment analysis using python and there you would have seen these values for the matrix so if we see for negative labels the python uh, sentiment analysis that was done using text blob the precision was about 88% about 90% and recall was 46% but for us using the ml azure add in we have a better recall than precision for the negative labels and for the positive labels here we see better recall than precision 
and here we see just the opposite better precision than recall so the results are conflicting actually if we try to compare the ml azure add-in and the python the results are conflicting they are just the opposite but the thing is the analysis that we did was just based on a sample of the data so that could be one reason why we have these conflicting results so if this were a different sample either in the python analysis or in the excel analysis the results would have been different all we can glean from this comparison of the python and excel comparison is that this is a good starting point and there are some inbuilt advantages that excel has you don't need to know programming it's very simple it can be very quickly done but the disadvantages are that the data set cannot be large while python can process huge amounts of data excel you cannot have large amounts of data you will start getting memory error beyond a certain amount of uh, rows for example in this example in this tutorial when i tried to process more than 2000 tweets i got a memory memory error so memory is a problem here when you try using excel but that problem is not there in python so it's a very quick way to get an, uh, an initial understanding of what the data is and it gives you a very quick insight into what the data is really about and then you can do much more uh, in-depth analysis using a greater amount of data using python